Today is tomato planting day. I am so excited. Today we are gonna be weeding this area behind our barn. I haven't decided yet if I want to put my tomatoes back here or my dahlias. I have about 30 more dahlias that need planted and I'm running out of room in the perennial cut flower garden for them. So I'm thinking about putting them over here I usually have my tomatoes in a lot earlier in the year and they've kind of taken a back seat because of the new cut flower garden this year but it is time for them to go in the ground and I cannot wait I'm growing lots of varieties this year I will put them all in the description but I will also tell you first off we have just a regular beef steak we have giant Belgium. Oh, and I also, I'm doing it in kind of a rainbow pattern. And then just for reference, this is our, we call it a barn, um, at the back of our property behind the cut flower garden. The perennial cut flower garden is behind me. But we have just a regular beef steak. Then we've got giant Belgium. We've got delicious Matt's wild cherry, which are all red. We've got pink ox heart, which is a pink. We've got sun gold, which is a very popular uh, cherry tomato, an orange cherry tomato that is supposedly really sweet. I'm very excited to try that one. Matt's wild cherry is a popular red cherry tomato. I'm excited to try that one also. Next, we have Dr. I don't know if it's Dr. Witchies or Dr. Wikes. I've heard people say it both ways, but that one is a large orangish yellow tomato that Jess, Jess from Roots and Refuge talks about being her favorite or one of her like top favorite tomatoes. Next we have orange ox heart, which is an orange, and then we have Berry's Crazy Cherry. I got this one from uh, Baker's Creek. This one's also a popular one. It's kind of got a odd shape to it. It's a yellow cherry and it's supposed to be extremely prolific and have very large trusses of cherry tomatoes. Then we have Wapsipinican peach. I grew that one last year. I really like that one. It has a fuzzy texture just like a peach um, and it has a really great taste. They are pretty small though. Then next we have white cherry. It's my first time growing that one. And then we have evergreen which is a tomato that it's green when it's ripe. So you have to be careful and make sure you fill the tomato and make sure that it's uh, not soft and mushy because it's hard to, you know, tell just by looking at it if it's ripe or not. Then we have Paul Robeson, which is also a recommendation from Jess. Next, we have Indigo Cherry Drops. I got that one from Johnny's. That one's a really pretty blue. The last three here are blue also. We have Blue Berries, Blue Beauty, and Purple Bumblebee. Those are all uh, really uh, purplish blue tomatoes that I am super, super excited. Um, I think Sun Gold is one of the ones I'm most excited about trying for the taste, the sweetness, but for the looks, I'm most excited about these to be in my harvest basket. <laughs> I also have a few over here. Uh, that I'm going to try to squeeze in these two vegetable beds because I dwindled my 54 varieties down to I think it was 36 and I didn't have quite as much room to plant them all over there behind the barn so I want to try to squeeze in these last six varieties between these two beds I've also got a couple containers I could put them in um, if all else but we have great white 
black from Tula, uh, Amana orange, Japanese black trifle, which is a pear shaped. Uh, that one was a really good tasting tomato. Um, it, it didn't like blow my mind like some people said it was, you know, so, so good. But it could have been that I was over watering them. Um, so I want to try that one again this year. But very pretty tomato nonetheless and still tasted good. Uh, Dancing with Smurfs is a blue cherry tomato. And then we have a uh, pearly pink cherry. So as you can see, I used four tea posts and I put cattle panel at the top. I wasn't thinking, I was thinking about how tall tomatoes get uh, and I wanted to get it, you know, as far up there as I could to take advantage of all the height of the tea posts. And I wasn't thinking about the fact that now I'm left with all of this blank space and the tomatoes don't have anything to attach to until they get up there. Um, my husband was like, I was going to say something, but I figured you knew what you wanted. And I was like, no, you should have said something. So what I'm going to do is tie a string probably two, maybe three times up the, uh, the bottom part and do kind of like a Florida weave type situation um, just to you know, just to kind of su support them a little bit until they get up to the cattle panel. Now to amend these beds, all I'm doing is putting some compost into each hole. I'm going to be putting about a tablespoon of biotone into each planting hole. I've also got some uh, ground up eggshells that I'll sprinkle maybe a teaspoon into each hole. And then I will fertilize these once a week with Neptune's Harvest for... Oh, I'd say about a month. I'll do it once a week and then I will just do it as it looks like it needs it and I will also start to do garden tone once a month or tomato tone. Any of the garden tones, tomato tones, any of those really are going to work well uh, but I will say so far my experience with the biotone using it when I'm planting new plants I have uh, noticed a very very big difference in the amount of growth and like you know them not being getting as much transplant shock uh, so I definitely do recommend that uh, it took me a while to like invest in it because it is it is a little expensive <clears throat> excuse me uh, but I definitely I, I see the difference it makes and I definitely believe that it's worth it All right, we got 10 of them in the ground. The kids are up now, so my little one will usually like just sit around and relax for about an hour when he first wakes up, but then he is constantly on the move and we don't have our fence up yet, so uh, I have to pretty much follow him all around the yard or we have to just stay in the house. All right, guys, we got them all in the ground. I didn't get to film a whole lot for you. Like I said, uh, my kids are up and so we are gonna go play at the park for a little bit to reward my older son Bailey for keeping him busy for me for a little bit because usually usually anytime I need to get something done I can't I am so happy that I was able to get these all in the ground because usually I would get one or two in the ground and then you know have to go after my eight-year-old for picking on the little one or something now I'm gonna quickly water them and then we're gonna go to the park for a little bit it's actually very overcast. I think it's gonna rain, but I'm not sure if it's gonna sprinkle or rain a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and water these guys in. Some of them are pretty thirsty. I watered, or I planted most of them up to their first, uh, their seed leaves. So about an inch to an inch and a half deeper than they originally were. Um, you can remove a lot of those lower leaves and plant them even deeper than that. Stop 
All right, guys, so here we are uh, about two days later. The next day after planting these guys, we had a really, really bad rainstorm, but they are all looking really good. Not phased one bit. Now, this is my first year using this trellising system. Uh, in the past, I've always used the larger tomato cages. Uh, I think they're 54 inches tall. Um, and then I, I will usually put some of the seven foot stakes in the cage with it because the cages just are never tall enough. Um, and, then, and then even the seven foot stakes end up not being tall enough. But that's what I usually use and I usually let like one to three main stems grow um, It gets really crowded in those cages. It gets really hard to prune them and harvest them Especially when you have several other tomato plants, you know very close to it So I really think that it's gonna be a lot better for them to be growing on this cattle panel because essentially they're gonna be kind of growing in like a flattened out manner instead of in like a round bush form because I'm gonna be taking each stem and you know tying it up to the cattle panel trellis so I'm gonna be able to easily get to each and every stem instead of having to you know get in behind and beside and all of that if this is your first time growing tomatoes I know it's probably hard to imagine that this little plant will be you know so large that it's hard to harvest when grown in one of those little tomato cages but it will it will get very large it will get very tall it will branch out it will bush out it will need pruned it will grow all the way up this uh, cattle panel trellis now another thing that I wanted to kind of uh, talk about a little bit more in detail is the number of main leaders that you allow to grow if you know anything about tomato plants, you, you know that they have suckers and that those will eventually turn into a main stem of your plant if let to grow long enough. So some people will tell you that they think it's better to just have one main leader and then to plant their tomato plants about a foot apart. Some people will say let two or three grow and to plant them about 18 inches apart. Some people will say, you know, let several grow and plant your tomato plant about two to two and a half foot apart. Now, really, it's, it's really going to come down to, you know, your personal preferences. There's really no right answer, um, but I just wanted to give you my opinion on why I think um, that it's better to do about, you know, 15 to 18 inches apart and then to let like two, three, maybe four grow. So if in, in previous years when I've only let one main stem grow, I found that you end up with a, say, six foot tall tomato plant that you have to, you know, top off at the top because you don't have, you know, a, you know, you don't have an infrastructure set up to let it grow, you know, 20 foot tall like some people do in greenhouses. So you end up with a tomato plant that's about six foot tall and then you only have like maybe five sets of fruit on that tomato plant. So, you know, essentially you have like one and a half square foot of growing space taken up for maybe 20 tomatoes um, whereas if you let several main stems grow you will end up with you know three to four times as many tomatoes in just a couple more inches you know of growing space Another issue that I have found with only having one main leader is if something happens and you accidentally top off that plant or if you know you have a pest issue you know um, some animal comes along and nibbles on the top of your plant then that entire plant is done um, you could possibly uh, let a sucker grow and turn that sucker into a main stem but it's still going to set that plant back quite a bit in growth and you are going to have like a lull in production whereas if you have more than one stem you still have other stems producing something however i do think it's beneficial not to you know do the situation where you plant them a couple foot apart and then you let multiple stems grow because then you run into really bushy plants uh, where there's not a lot of airflow in between the leaves every time it rains uh, when you have all those leaves really close together then they don't dry out as easily because they're uh, you know they're not getting sunlight to each and every one of them and then you can end up with a lot of disease issues 
Now, if you're in an area that doesn't get a lot of rain, you may be fine uh, to just let your plants bush out as much as they'd like. But I'm in Southern Indiana and we get rain several days a week. And even when it's not rainy, we have like 80 to 90% humidity most of the summer. So it's just very wet and hot and sticky here. And we have a lot of disease issues if we don't keep them pruned a little bit. In the end, it's really gonna come down to personal preference. There are pros and cons on every way of pruning and growing tomatoes. And you just have to really decide which one you like better. There's definitely a lot more ways to grow them and prune them than the ones I mentioned. Those are just, I feel like, three of the more popular uh, you know, pruning strategies. There's also a lot more ways to trellis them as well. Uh, this is just two that I have done. I'd love to know down in the comments, uh, if you've grown tomatoes before, what are some of the ways that you have grown them or pruned them or trellised them? Let me know, you know, if you're watching this video that you stopped by, just say hello. I love talking to you guys in the comments and getting to know you. And thank you for watching my videos as well, by the way. I really appreciate each and every one of you that watch, like, and subscribe. I really do like, you know, getting to know you guys and talking to you guys down in the comments. But as for this video, that is going to be it. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one. Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry about the lawnmower in the background, but I just wanted to quickly bring you in and show you what I'm doing today. So today I am putting marigolds and basil in between each of the tomato plants. I'm going to do orange, white, and yellow marigolds, and then we're going to do Mrs. Burns lemon basil, licorice basil, and lime basil. I grew cinnamon basil last year, which has a purple bloom, uh, but I'm starting to like the licorice basil more uh, since growing that one this year. It has a purple bloom also.